The Bible is full of inspiring stories, such as the one of Joseph, full of obedience to God, or the one of Abraham, with an unwavering faith, and the occasional stubborn character like Jonah. The story we'd like to share with you shapes very much like the one of little Samuel, found in 1 Samuel 3. The story of Samuel is of him as a child during the time that he was being mentored by the priest Eli. It all happened during the night while Samuel kept on hearing a voice calling out to him and he would run and see the priest Eli and ask him, did you call? And the priest would say, no, I didn't call. You can go back to bed. The Bible says that that happened three different times, but after the third time that the priest Eli perceived that it was the Lord calling out to him. Up to this point, Samuel didn't know what it was like to hear from God's voice. So the priest instructed him to go back to bed and it also told him what to say next if the voice called out to him. And what he told them to say is the part that actually ties to the story we'd like to share with you. He told them to say, Here I am, Lord, for your servant hears. Our story is also being about hearing God's voice, but not necessarily know what to do with the call. Samuel's story happened all in one night. Our story is taking place over three, maybe four years. It all started in the summer of 2012. My wife came across a flyer for GYC that's going to be held in Pine Springs, California, right next to Palm Springs area. The title was Unless. We've never been to a GYC meeting, but the title seemed interesting, so we went. While at GYC, we heard God's voice the first time. It became clear that we needed to get out of the city and begin to live a country life. Prior to this, we had talked about wanting to to be closer to Mario since he was away in boarding school in Tennessee. The move overall seemed appealing. After GYC, all seemed to come together. We thought we were ready for the move, but not ready enough just to pick up and go. We came back from GYC with the desire to make changes in our lifestyle. We talked to the boys about the new things we wanted to try. God directed us to make changes. God was putting a lot of things in front of me about country living. It's like I was being schooled at a rapid rate brought back memories of school, a lot of information all at one time. So I started to look into gardening. I watched a lot of videos and read a lot. Started to purchase materials, got Miguel involved. Within two months, our greenhouse was up. Started seedlings. Also, we learned about aquaponics and it was really interesting. All this was supposed to be experimental. Miguel won first place on his science project using the newfound aquaponics technique. This all seemed like the right training before the move. We prayed for God to guide and open doors. Two years later, we were still waiting. Then I put in a couple transfer requests through my job to be closer to the boys' school. By this time, both our boys were in Tennessee. We really wanted to transfer now. We put in where and when we wanted, but there was no openings. We tried to do this our way, but no success. After months of waiting, we finally got Gave it all up to God. Whatever he wanted us, the schedule he wanted to give me. It was here we heard God's voice for the second time. And within a week, my general manager approached me and asked me if I was still interested in relocating. I said yes, but there was no openings last time I checked. She said something had just opened up. And how soon do you want to move? Is it two or four weeks? This we knew was from God. This was the news we had been waiting for, but we weren't ready to move in two or four weeks, physically or financially, but God had this whole thing worked out for us. We just didn't know, didn't know it yet. He is amazing. With the help from our church family, we, uh, we were packed and ready to move for this new adventure. We arrived in North Carolina at the end of May. Within a week of starting at my new location, I got word from friends back in Arizona that my old position, along with others, had been terminated as part of a company restructure. This confirmed that God had led us here. We were welcomed by an amazing church family that housed us in their home. Gracias, hermana Carmen y hermano Miguel. We stayed there for the next five months as we learned new streets, did some church hopping, met some wonderful people. We began to settle in and get involved in activities and ministries, and just recently started to talk to realtors about homes and even getting approved for a home. We thought this is where we would stay and start our homestead. But as it, as it says in Isaiah 55 eight, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
neither are your ways my way, says the Lord. After much prayer on where to purchase a home, God had a different plan. Attending GYC was a way for us to seek peace or a new purpose in life. You see, we didn't always walk the straight and narrow way, nor we live up to God's standards. We lived a Christian lukewarm lifestyle, sadly to admit, but we took off and put on Christianity just as we saw fit. We indulged ourselves. We got to build our custom home right off the ground, and that was nice. We had good paying jobs. We had opened our to overtime, which meant more spending money. We got to purchase a brand new hybrid car, and we got to do that twice. We traveled, and we were just living a good life, or so we thought. But all that came to a halt during that financial collapse. Remember 2008, 2009? Our jobs cut back that overtime privilege, and soon after that, I found myself without a job. Then Mario's hours were cut short at work, so the inevitable happened, and we ended up losing our home. And even without a house payment, it was still very hard to keep up with the basic necessities. We started seeking God in desperation. Now, He did some work in our lives. And by 2011, we were in a different place. And now, we were facing high school for Marito. Now, we found that God had led us to Tennessee, to Heritage Academy. Well, now the decision had been made, but we still didn't have the means to. So we did what we had to do. We surrendered our brand new car in order to have the ability to cover his travel fees and his tuition fees. Oh, it was a bumpy ride, but it was through all that loss that God had began a work in our lives. So after months ago, God has shown us another plan. And the question is, how are we going to answer his calling? Some of the things we've been talking about, it's, is God asking too much of us this time? This reminds me of a story in the Bible, the story of Elisha in 1 Kings 19. As God tells Elijah to anoint Elisha as the prophet to replace him, it says that Elijah finds Elisha plowing in a field with a pair of oxen and immediately throws his mantle on Elisha as an invitation to follow him. Elisha immediately obeys and burns his plow and cooks the oxen and gives it to his friends to eat. Wow, Elisha really showed a commitment to Elijah. He wasted no time in obeying. He didn't go away to take time to think about it. He didn't write out a list of pros and cons. He didn't play it safe. He immediately said yes to God's calling through Elijah. Elisha committed commitment shows that the cost of following God is great, but the cost of not following Him is even greater. Furthermore, Elisha's commitment was complete. He burned his plows, slaughtered his oxen, and left his family inheritance behind. He left everything he knew and loved behind. That last part we can relate. Having left our relatives and our dear friends behind just about a year ago, and that was not easy. And now he's asking us to give up more. What else is left? Well, I wish we can say we answered the call like Elisha, but we did everything Elisha didn't do. We talked about it a lot, looked at pros and cons, we prayed, we looked at all the areas of our lives that will be drastically changed in reality, not wanting to let go of our security blanket. During this time, we have been reminded by Bible verses, don't store up treasures here on earth where moss eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. And another verse where Jesus says to his disciples, if any of you want to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. Or the quote we've, or the quote we've heard that says, strength is not shown in what you can hold on to. Strength is shown in the things you can let go of. Elisha shows us that the step toward your destiny, you have to step away from your security is this your commitment to God, immediate and complete like Elisha's? What security might you need to walk away from in order to walk toward your destiny? We know that God has our best interests at hand. However, this has been one of the hardest questions to answer. So we'll step out in faith as we answer God's call. Just like little Samuel in the story my wife shared in the beginning, here I am Lord for your servant hears. So what is this change, you may ask? Well, we are once again changing zip codes. We are moving. We have accepted the invitation to be volunteer staff slash missionaries 
working for God at Heritage Academy in Tennessee. Couldn't we say that on a Facebook post? Yes, we could have, but we wanted to share the journey that God has taken us through.